G'day, I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Now, given we've looked at the majority of the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service building blocks, rather than diving further into custom APIs, what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to take a step back from the detail and remind you of the big picture of what custom API development is all about. Demonstrating an end-to-end -end custom API example using mobile backends, connectors, and Node.js to join it all up. All right, let's imagine this scenario. Say you're building a stock inventory enterprise app to help you monitor live stock levels of ice cream around your various stores in your local state. Now, thanks to the crazy climate these days, the temperatures can rocket up and down each day, affecting sales and consuming stock at an alarming rate. So beyond all the intelligent big data analytics for monitoring stock levels versus sales, your staff would just simply like to know what the current temperature is in each city to help them understand the local sales trends based on the weather. In order to do this, your stock inventory app wants access to a third party weather service to retrieve the current temperatures in various cities where you have stores such as Perth, Australia, where I live. Luckily, the third party web service is already restful and returns JSON payloads. Sweet, that's going to be great for the mobile use case. As such, our mobile app can simply issue a HTTP GET to the service's URL, retrieving the weather observations for my hometown, Perth. But then we discover some problems. Firstly, the URL for the restful services is a bit of a messy one. We have to hit weather.acme.com forward slash API, then some odd code ob7605.json to get the current weather for Perth. Our mobile developers are struggling to remember these odd codes for each city and they keep on making mistakes, retrieving the wrong temperatures. And in turn, the codes change from time to time without warning meaning we'd have to update the mobile app and roll out updates to our staff's devices extremely quickly for them to not notice the changes. Alternatively, it would be really good if we could just isolate the apps entirely from this sort of change. In looking under the covers at the payload return from the service, it contains not just the current temperature for Perth, but 36 other weather observation points for items like the current humidity, wind speed, and so on. I guess we can live with that. It's not too much data. But as we dig further under the covers, we realize the web service returns not just this data, but 142 other observation sets representing the weather observations every 30 minutes over the last 72 hours. Now, this is a huge payload to force down our limited Wi-Fi and cellular connections to our mobile apps when the app essentially only wants one field, the current temperature. And to make matters worse, when we rang the weather service, begging them to provide a mobile optimized weather service, they just laughed evilly, ha 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 ha, ignoring your suggestion. And then they said they're thinking of changing these REST APIs from a free of charge service to one where you have to pay per API core. Damn those dastardly meteorology scientists. So how can we fix this? Well, surprise, surprise, Oracle Mobile Cloud Service comes to the rescue. So given what we already know about MCS, we're going to build out a mobile backend exposing a custom API to call the external weather service via a connector. Specifically, we're going to build out a custom API to include a much easier URL endpoint for our mobile developers, where they will issue a get against the MCS base URL mobile custom, then weather forward slash observations, and finally specify the city they're interested in as a URL query parameter, which overall is much easier to understand. We'll then build a connector for the custom API Node.js code to access the remote web service. And when it returns a response, we'll whistle down the web service payload to contain just the current weather observations for that city. Alrighty, to make this a little bit more fun, like all the articles and videos you see out there from software vendors, what we're going to try and do is all of this under five minutes. Because under five minutes always makes a great soundbite. So let's get on it. Tick tock, tick tock. With the clock ticking, we'll start out by logging into an MCS instance where we'll create a brand new mobile backend called Stock Inventory. And we'll then return to this at a later point in time to expose our custom API. Next, we'll create a new custom API called Weather Service with an API name of Weather, which translates to this externalized URL for the custom API for our mobile apps to connect to. 
At this point, I can upload a RAML file, which I've designed elsewhere to define the Weather Services API's REST API. However, we haven't taught you about RAML files yet, so during this demo, we'll build out the REST API manually via the MCS user interface. Uh, this is really going to blow our five minutes here, but hey, we'll do it anyway for demo purposes. In drilling into the custom API, you'll note it's split into a tab to design and configure the API, including tabs to define the REST endpoints and security. Alternatively, the implementation option is where we define the Node.js code for our custom API, which will take any calls to the REST endpoint and call our connector to access the remote web service. But we're a little ahead of the game here, so let's go back and define the endpoints. On the Endpoints tab, it's here we can manually build what our REST endpoints will look like for the custom API. The first thing we wanted to do was build a new resource, Observations, and then select the method options to say that the Observations resource supports a GET request. In turn, for the request of the Observations resource, we'll support a URL query parameter, Locations which will be a required field and require a string value like the example perf. For testing purposes, before we build out the whole example, we'll include a response payload returning a 200 successful HTTP status code and an example payload of location, perf, temperature, 35 degrees Celsius. Saving all of this and returning to the endpoints page, we can click on the editor button and see the rest endpoints described in a RAML file. Now again, we haven't defined RAML for you yet, but as you can see here, you can see for our API an endpoint called observations, accepting a get with a query parameter locations, returning potentially a 200 status code of success with a dummy payload. We can edit this code live here if we wanted to, and it would be reflected in the endpoints if we switch back to the manual method for creating the endpoints in the user interface. Switching back to the default view, then returning to the designer view, we then need to consider the security options for this API. Essentially, what roles does a mobile user need to access this API? Now we can define these at the API level or for each individual endpoint. Alternately, as I'll do here, I'll set this API call to allow anonymous user access so we don't need any roles at this stage. Before we build out the code for all of this, it would be nice to be able to test this API so the mobile developer can understand what they're getting. The MCS user interface provides a live testing tool to do this. From the test screen, we can pick up any of the endpoints we've defined. So for us here, that's just observations. Then on the right hand side, we can make a test call to that endpoint. You'll note how the full URL of the API is visible, and then underneath the options to enter the details required to call this particular observations endpoint. For our endpoint, we'll need to supply a value for the URL query parameters called locations, and in this case, I'll enter the value perf. In addition, we need to specify a mobile backend and version to execute the custom API in context of, as MCS always requires an API to be executed in context of a mobile backend. Now, we haven't wired up the mobile backend with the custom API yet, so I'll just arbitrarily pick a mobile backend and version. I don't need to supply a username and password, as we granted this API anonymous access privileges earlier. And selecting the test endpoint button, we can see the request payload formed to call the API and the response as well as our dummy test payload. So now that we've built out our REST API for this custom API, we're left with creating the connector to call the external web service, plus the Node.js call to do the real work under the covers. In selecting the development tab, connectors option, then new connector button followed by REST, we're presented with a dialogue to enter details around the connector and remote web service we want to call. Here we'll enter a connector name of Acme Weather Con and the same name for the API name, which will be used to identify the connector from the custom API Node.js code we'll create soon. In specifying the API name, you can see the internal URL for this connector. In addition, we supply the base URL of the external web service, in this case, HTTP, forward slash forward slash weather.acme.com forward slash API.
MCS will then ask you for a number of other settings for the connector, which we can leave as the default values for now. However, if we go to the test page, this does provide a useful option for testing the connector itself. So here we can see the local internal URI for the connector that our Node.js code will call in a moment. And then MCS will translate into the external URL of the Acme weather service. In order to get the observations for Perth, I would need to add ob7605.json here, as we saw earlier. Then set the authentication credentials we did previously, and finally we can test the connection. Here you can see the payload return from the external web service for Perth. All right, so with our connector defined, our final task is to build out the Node.js code for the weather service custom API we created earlier. Now for demo purposes, I'll cheat a little and copy in chunks of code, which I'll explain as we go along, rather than tediously typing out the code while you observe my horrible typing mistakes. Returning to our custom API, we will now click on the implementations option and select the JavaScript scaffold button. Via your browser, MCS downloads a zip file containing the code, essentially a scaffold we'll start working with. In unzipping the file, you can see it contains a readme file, a samples file, but more importantly two files, one containing our JavaScript code for us to fill out, and a metadata file, package.json, where we describe the JavaScript code and its dependencies. In opening the JavaScript file in our favourite text editor, we see our first glimpse of Node. Now on this line of code here, you can see that this Node.js code is publishing a service that listens for a get to the relative URI path that matches what we defined earlier in the MCS user interface. Now this is called a router or handler and it's implemented in Node through a module called Express. Within this router, it defines a function that receives the request object, in our case from the mobile client, and also gives a handle on the response object, which will eventually be returned to the mobile client once the code is complete. In terms of the actual code to handle the request and response, it currently really doesn't do that much. On this line here, it creates an empty JSON result. Then on this line, it returns a successful 200 status code with the empty payload. So at this point, I'll copy in some more substantial Node.js code and explain it in detail so you get a much more substantial Node example to understand. So starting out here, the overall code block takes the incoming request. And then this code block here, the first thing it does, well, do you remember that URL query parameter location we created? This is how you access it in Node. And given the location value equaling perf, we then translate that to the code required by the remote web service. Specifically, OB7605 for perf. In this example here, if we don't recognize the location, we automatically return a 404 error to the mobile client with an empty payload. Now, alternatively, in a real application, we would build out the else if statements here or use a lookup table to accept more cities and translate their code on the fly. So assuming everything is going well, we then get a handle on the internal custom API SDK provided by MCS, which provides additional functionality such as allowing us to call the connectors. In order to call the remote service, we need to form a payload containing the URI of the connector we created earlier, and any other payload items required by that service. Now, we don't have any payload items here for this particular external web service, so we won't do this. However, do note how we add the city code to the end of the connector URI, and like we saw in the connector test page, this will be extracted and added to the external web service URL. Then we call the SDK REST API to issue a GET based on the options list. Remember, the option list contains the internal connector URI, so on your behalf, the SDK will call the connector and indirectly the external web service for you. The nested functional handler that you can see here receives as a result either an error, a valid response including the HTTP header, and the payload or body of the response. 
Now in this example, if we detect an error, we just relay that back to the mobile client directly to deal with. But of course, a real app would probably do something a little nicer here. Alternatively, if there isn't an error, we extract the JSON payload from the body and then extract just the first set of observations, that is the weather observations, from the data payload. Finally, we return this smaller payload to the mobile client with a successful 200 status code too. So that completes editing the JavaScript code. The other file we need to modify is the package.json file, which is a metadata file for the JavaScript. As you can see, it includes things like the custom API name and version. Now you'll learn more about this file later in more episodes, but for our purposes here, we need to fill out any dependencies that the JavaScript has. So we need to fill out the connector element here to include the connector our code makes a call to. Having completed our code edits, we then zip the directory up containing our files and returning to the MCS user interface, we either drop the zip file into the implementations page or we select the file via the file open dialog. Once the file uploads and assuming there are no errors, we will see there are two versions of the implementation listed. The version 1.0 file you just uploaded and a mock version. The mock version represents the test data you placed in the custom API endpoint design and you can switch between using the mock implementation and your own code by selecting either entry then selecting the set as default button. For our demonstration purposes here, we'll stick with the new code we just uploaded. Right, from here, like we saw earlier, you can now test the API, but with the real node code you just wrote. So again, we select the test button and select the observations endpoint we want to test. Then we enter perf for the location, set the authentication options, and finally the test endpoint button. Now in the response, we can see a real payload returned from the external web service, which is via the connector and the node code we just built in our custom API, rather than the mock data we were seeing earlier on. The final thing we now need to do is return to our mobile backend and expose the API to be used. We select our mobile backend and then the APIs tab, followed by the select API button. Then amongst the sea of APIs, we locate the weather services API and add it to the mobile backend. And there you go, that's the basics of custom APIs and, oh, Oh, I forgot to put a battery in it. Well, just between you and me, let's just say that took four minutes and 55 seconds and nobody will be the wiser, hey? Anyway, continuing on in our series of videos, we'll be delving deeper into both defining the interface side of custom APIs as well as the Node.js code. In turn, for those of you who aren't familiar with REST and RAML, we'll dig into those concepts too. But ultimately in this video, you've got a taste for how simple it is to build our custom APIs with connectors in Node.js. Thanks for joining us. I hope you saw today how easy it is to use MCS. Hope you'll join us in those next videos very soon.